Let's look at what else is in the core of a reactor. So here you can see the fission event. We break up the uranium into two fission products. And by the way, those are the radioactive materials. The fission products are the nuclear waste. And they don't leave the reactor core. In fact, you look at this fuel pellet, they stay inside a fuel pellet. The fuel pellet gets warm, of course. Now, the next thing is that you see that the neutrons are produced. These are the fast neutrons. And they bounce off and bounce around on the moderator. The moderator is the water flowing through the reactor. Eventually, when they slow down enough, they can be captured with another uranium nucleus and cause another chain reaction, and the reactor can continue. Now, you might wonder, what do you do to make the thing speed up or slow down? You've got to interfere with the neutron dance. You've got to take some of the neutrons out of the picture. So a control rod, pictured here, absorbs neutrons. There are certain substances whose nuclei do that. Boron, for instance. Boron 10 will absorb a neutron, become boron 11. It's not radioactive. It just likes neutrons. Gadolinium, cadmium. There are a variety of materials that are wonderful neutron absorbers. You stick them in the reactor, they absorb the neutrons. No neutrons dancing around, no chain reaction. Or if all of this moderator disappears because it's the water that's going through the reactor and it boils away, there's nothing to slow down the neutrons and the reaction stops. So that's highly stylized. Let's look again at a little less stylized. You can see here that the whole core business of a reactor is just this part down in here. And it's coated by, surrounded by some pressure vessel where the water that you're trying to boil becomes steam. So what's all the extra space? Well, there's lots of parts, and we'll talk about many of them. But I want to point out one particular very important one. And that's this thing called the containment vessel. Now we're going to have a whole segment on containment itself. just want to mention at this point that was the other difference between Chernobyl and basically the rest of the reactors in the world. They felt that their type of reactor was safe enough and did not need a containment building. The people in the West thought that was crazy and it did turn out to be crazy. Containment vessels are expensive, but they're extremely effective. And in the worst possible case, when something terrible might go wrong, the containment vessel will hold all of the radioactive materials inside. So here is a nice stylized view. Water goes in, the moderator, it's also the coolant. The chain reactions occur, the fission products are very hot, the water cools them, which means the water heats up, it boils, it makes steam, the steam goes through the turbine, turbine spins the generator, generator makes electricity. The water has to be condensed back into a liquid, so the steam is condensed through a liquid. You do this by having some outside water source, that outside water source warms up, you need to cool it to air temperature through a cooling tower. The cooling tower is not the nuclear reactor. It's a big concrete shell. Coal power plants, any modern power plants need cooling towers so you don't do thermal pollution to the environment. If I go to the next picture, we see the Clinton Power Station in central Illinois. The containment building is obviously this dome state structure. Okay? That is the nuclear reactor. And inside the very middle of it, relatively small volume, is the core itself. The containment building is very important because this will ultimately, in the worst case, control and keep anything that had gone through the core inside the containment building. You see, the way things become radioactive is if they get hit by neutrons. And in the core of the reactor, you have neutrons going everywhere. So indeed, those components inside the core of the reactor do become radioactive. 
not the highly radioactive stuff like the fission products, but enough that at the end of the day you're going to need to cut it apart and bury it for a while. The water that goes through the reactor can also become radioactive. The thing is that hydrogen takes a lot. It becomes deuterium, which is not radioactive. If oxygen absorbs neutrons, it becomes oxygen 17, which is not radioactive. You could make a little oxygen 18, which is. But more important than the water itself is that the water goes through pipes, and those pipes over time wear off. You get a few atoms of iron or whatever the pipes are made out of in the water. Those iron atoms go through the reactor core, become radioactive, and they need to be filtered out, just like a water conditioner would filter things out. And those resin beads that end up doing that filtering is a substance that again has to be buried in the end because it is slightly radioactive. So even though water is coming in and steam is coming out, that's not a huge source of the radioactivity that could go through. But initially, especially when people were worried about that, they made a different type of reactor. They made what's called a pressurized water reactor. And you'll notice here that there's another loop, okay? There's another loop. So the core, the water, so the water that goes through the core goes into another heat exchanger, and that heat exchanger turns water into steam. That's the steam that goes through the turbine, goes through the condenser, and then circulates. An extra loop. You take a little bit of an efficiency hit by having an extra loop, but you get a little bit of a safety boost by having the water that actually leaves the containment building not being water that went through the core of the reactor itself. What I've presented in fission, of course, is a simplified view. And I think it's best illustrated by taking an actual look at the nuclear cross-section. This, again, is the chance of a fission, that's called Barnes, it's a unit of cross-section, versus the energy of the neutron. And the general shape that I showed you, the decrease at higher energies is true, but you see all this stuff, all this static hash in the middle. Some of these resonances going up a factor of almost a thousand. This area here does tend to make fission a little more complicated. That's good. You got to have something for nuclear engineers to do and to worry about. But the general principle is the same. Fast neutrons are produced and have a very low chance of creating a fission. If you slow them down and moderate them, Slow neutrons have a much higher chance of making a fission, and that allows us to have an inherent safety factor that if the coolant is the moderator, you will have a reactor that will shut itself down if somehow it loses its coolant. That's the key you need to know about fission.